here. Um, welcome to my channel. Uh, so today we have a very special guest with me. Uh, this is my wonderful service dog in training, Theodore. Look at the camera. Yes, he's very cute. Um, he is a one and a half year old um, standard poodle. He has a phantom print. So he's got the eyebrows, he's got the chin, everything. So I'm going to talk about um, service dogs today. Um, I'm going to talk about different types of service dogs and I'm going to show you a few of the things that he does for me um, that he is currently learning. So um, I hope you enjoy this video. We've got a few things in this video we want to complete. So let's get to it. I'm going to start with the questions um, and give you guys some rundown information about um, service dogs, what they do, um, and the differences between them. So, uh, stay tuned. video, I talked about um, the good things that are going on um, for me currently in my life. So, one of the things uh, that I was very good and happy about, I guess, the week was that um, me and my husband got to go out and vote together um, and I mentioned being in a wheelchair. But my main um, diagnosis is EDS or Allerdanlos syndrome. Basically it is a disease that affects the tissues, joints, muscles, basically all, every part of your body. Um, it's affected me quite a bit. Um, I most likely have had it my whole life but in the last two to three years now, um, it's kind of done what we call like a flare up. Um, so it's um, caused a lot more other health issues um, within my body than I would like to admit. Um, and it's all been kind of like a zero to 60 kind of thing. So uh, that's the main reason why I have a service dog. He is technically not a full fledged service dog yet. He is just in training. So he is learning how to be calm, cool, collected. He's learning um, all the basic dog things. Um, and he is being trained by me. So what that is called is owner trained, ser um, owner -trained service dog. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I am slowly teaching him what I need him to learn. So then I can be more independent out in the world um, and don't always have to rely on a wheelchair, um, walking sticks, braces, you name it. So um, he is pretty much there for that. I, like I said in my last video, I have a lot of trouble with mobility. Uh, that's the main reason for the wheelchair. Uh, I first got that when I, well, I first started using it one back in October of 2019. Um, and then I got my new one, um, which I'll do a whole video about all that kind of stuff. Um, I got that one in December. Um, and so I call it Ollivander, like the wand shop in Harry Potter, uh, because it's this really nice olive green color. So um, I use it because of another disease, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It's a form of dysautonomia. Basically, my heart rate shoots up and my blood pressure shoots down and um, my body's involuntary signals, things that it's supposed to do all by itself, can't do it by itself. So blood sugar, um, breathing sometimes, uh, passing and digesting food. So I have this disease now called gastroparesis um, and I have intestinal dysmobility. Um, I have mast cell disease. So my uh my mast cells in my body the ones that tell you if you're having problems with allergies mine decided to go out of control me uh, right now with most of the es things um so like picking objects up off the ground um getting me things that i need um doing deep pressure therapy um getting me his stuff like his collar um picking up my phone when i drop it um, just a lot of a lot of things like that so um, he's very helpful very loving um, he's a little rambunctious 
um, and due to COVID, we haven't been able to do a ton of stuff. So um, fortunately though, he is settling down so we are able to start doing more of that training. Uh, my next question is, how long have I been training him? Um, I have been training him since he was a puppy. Um, we are doing all sorts of things. Hello! Um, hand signs. I want to give him the gift of a speech. Can you stay down here? Can you stay down here? Yeah? He's like, okay, mom, I guess. Um, he is, uh, I want to give him the gift of speech. Uh, hopefully for Christmas this year and let Santa Paws come in with maybe some other more fun gifts. Yeah. So, um, learning voice commands, a lot of different things. Um, just to be able to learn how to help me um, do some things. Dog training or send away service dog training. What's the difference? Um, so owner trained service dog uh, training <laughs> um, is basically when the owner or the handler teaches specifically to the tasks of their service dog that they are going to be needing, whether that be for things like blood sugar um, or uh, you know, if they have narcolepsy like I do, where they need someone to catch their head. Hello. He's probably gonna grab a toy. Um, or, um, hi, did you get your bone? Here, I'll move your trap. Um, and, <laughs> he's so cute. Um, you know, or just like, just tasks that they need um, specifically. So then the dog doesn't go through all this extra training for things that, He's probably never going to use um, so uh, it's a lot cheaper um, say $20,000 cheaper um, and it's a little better because you can train at your own pace um, with send away training they go to like a facility or something um, that basically just sorry I got treats in my pocket you can smell them mm -hmm. um, and basically what they do there is everything. They start from when the puppy is, I think, eight weeks old when they're typically able to come home with a family. Um, and they get them started on best training. They get them started um, on how to do simple tasks, like not to be distracted. Um, me and Theo both very easily distracted. Um, service dog, uh, you have to still follow all of the rules by the ADA. You still have to um, get them their health care. You still have to take care of all that stuff. So that stuff is an expense in itself. Um, getting yourself and training yourself to have a service dog and to work with them and to become a team is um, kind of <laughs> something that takes a long time to decide. Between me and my husband, we decided for about a year or so before we actually went and got Theo. And then we had to wait until he was born. Um, and then obviously until he was done um, growing enough to be able to be weaned off of a litter. Um, so is service dog defined by the ADA? Um, which is ADA stands for Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, yes. as dogs that are individually trained to do work or perform tasks for people with disabilities. Um, which is something he's working on. Yay! Are you squeaking that bone? Are you showing everybody how you can squeak it? He's a good squeaker. Alrighty. Um, let's see. Dogs whose sole function is to provide comfort or emotional support do not qualify under the ADA. So if you have a companion animal, a support, um, a support animal, um, an emotion, which is like emotional support. Um, if you have um, just anything like that, that does not qualify. They do not have the same rights as a service dog has because an emotional support animal is more of a pet and a service dog is more of medical equipment. So for like blind people, when their eyesight is gone, they either have their slow stick or they have the, um, or they have their dog. Um, obviously it's called a seeing eye dog, 
Um, you can go look up Molly Burke. She has great videos on it. She all opened my eyes to a lot of things that I didn't realize um, they can do. But their dog is their eyes. Whenever their dog is working, their dog is medical equipment. It's just the same as anything like a wheelchair, um, braces, uh, canes, anything like that. It is the same thing as that. Uh, it doesn't mean you can bang them around and all that kind of stuff like you do with uh, your wheelchair or your cane or whatever. But your dog, when they are working, are medical equipment. You don't go up to someone's wheelchair and just say, hi, how are you doing today? You know? So, uh, you know, think about it like that. It's just like for me when I'm out, my wheelchair is my legs. Don't touch my wheelchair unless you're, unless I'm okay with it and ask me first. Um, because I wouldn't just come up and start just you know, touching your legs. It'd be a little scandalous, I think. Speaking of, um, how is the best way to approach someone with a service dog um, in a way that is not distracting? I have a few questions into this one. So the best way to approach someone with a service dog is not to go for the dog first. Um, it is to, and I haven't been in a public situation with him yet, but this is going off of other people I know who have um, service animals. Um, basically the best way is to, um, confront the person. It's, it's just like when a person, when you enter into a building with a service animal, excuse me, with a service animal, um, that you are to, um, that they are not allowed to ask you. They can only say, um, you know, is this animal a, a, a service dog? And you can also ask, what task do they perform? This is, there's many reasons for this. Um, you wanna know what kind of tasks your dog completes for you, and you don't have to list every single one. You know, So then if they see a dog running around the store, they're not like, what the heck? They're like, I saw that person come in. Something's wrong. And then they can help assess the situation if needed. Um, so there's that, but you, you know, to approach someone with a service dog, a lot of the time, um, people will be nervous. Um, you know, whether they have PTSD, anxiety disorders on top of their other disabilities. Um, it's very nerve wracking to just walk up to somebody and say, is that a service dog? You know, with them not prepared for it. So the best way, um, I would say, and this would be a way that I maybe be cool with, <laughs> um, is if someone wanted to greet Theo, get my attention first. Either wave at me or, um, you know, approach me in a kind way. For me, I would say try to get my attention, then come talk to me. Don't just start going up to my dog because you're distracting them from their work. And what if I were to have uh, a seizure or something and you're over there distracting them from what they're supposed to be doing and they can't catch us, my seizure. Um, no, don't just approach the dog. That's gonna distract them. Their job, their duty is on the handler. Um, okay, some quick facts. Um, do service dogs need to be professionally trained? No. Do they need a certificate? No, there is no such thing. The only thing you will get is if you are um, in a bigger program or something, you might get like a diploma or something saying, hey, he went through this program, he did his training, he is a service dog. You don't need to carry that paperwork around with you. Actually, um, a lot of places have been getting this confused because there's a lot of sites popping up saying register your service dog. That's not a thing. Um, there are state and local laws um, basically saying, hey, we do need some kind of certification or something uh, stating your dog is a service dog. Uh, that's okay. You got to, you know, play by the rules if you want to keep your medical equipment with you, especially since your medical equipment is technically still a living thing. Um, so uh, from programs, you can get certificates you can get all sorts of things 
Um, but for owner trained service dog people like me, Theo isn't going to have any of that stuff. Yeah, I might get him like a gold medal or something or a trophy because he participated and he's great and I love him and he deserves it. Um, but they're misinformed if you go to a building and they ask, do you have certificate or registration? Because there's no such thing. Um, at that point, don't try to fight them. Um, I have heard a lot of people will bring up the ADA law and they will show it to them. Um, sometimes if that still doesn't work, just leave, call the manager, you know, let them know that their uh, greeters or whoever um, is misinformed. And then that will prompt a conversation, which we all need to have those kind of conversations, not just about service dogs, but about disabilities in general. Um, Okay, so we took a break mainly because I don't know how to use phone. So, just kidding. I sort of know how to use phone. Um, I believe I answered enough questions for you guys. If you have more questions, leave them in the comments. Um, but now I'm going to show you guys some of the things that Theo does. Yeah, you want to do it? You want to do it to him? Touch. So, uh, basically, we're looking at things. Theo has a full calendar. Um, I kind of just write down his appointments, what he needs, when he's taken certain medicines, um, and what he is learning for the week. So, this week, he is learning a get and retrieve collar. He's also working on doggy sign language. So, he's working on four different things. There's a sit, lay down, cross, and shake. Um, obviously, some of these really don't help me personally, but um, it's really cool just to teach him stuff. So um, for quick understanding, this is what I use for sit. This is what I use for lay down, for cross, and then this is what I'm using for uh, stand. Um, so he is learning about four of them a week. Yeah. So I'm going to show you guys those really quick. So you're going to be able to see the bottom half of me and my cane, but you will mostly be getting um, a bunch of cuteness from this little baby right here. Yeah. Stuff, or we're going to go over some things. So I'm going to start with the nonverbal stuff. And he should know these. Uh huh. Okay. So now he just laid down. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to. Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, he's stretching in the middle of it. Uh, once he's done showing that, I am going to show you guys how he gets me his collar. So as you can see, oh, he already heard it. So as you can see, his collar is right here. Says Theodore, super cute. It sits right here. And so I just tell him to pick it up. You pick it up. You pick it up. Pick it up. Good job. Yep. Thank you. And now. Sharpie. Oh no! Can you pick it up? Pick it up! You bring it to me? Give it here! And he gives it to me so then I have it back in my hands. Um, he also does that with keys. So if I say we're going somewhere, we get ready to go, and let's say I'm like walking out the door and I drop those on the ground. He'll pick them up for me. Here we give. <gasps> Thank you. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, so this last one's at a little bit of a weird angle. I am going to put my phone on the ground and show you how he picks up my phone. So I have a pop socket on the back of my phone. I have a pop socket. He will take, and he'll put his mouth around the pop socket. <sighs> this is an ugly view. <clears throat> um, and he will pick it up for me. So I'm gonna just 
you know, lightly drop my phone because I don't want anything to happen to it. Get out! Okay, that's what I keep picking up. Good job, buddy! Look at you! Good job! What is going to be if I were to need a deep pressure therapy, shortened as DPD. No, mm -mm. Well, that didn't work very well, now did it? Case. So I'm going to lay down and I'm going to call him to come lay on top of me. Come on. Lay down. And oh, there it is. So, yeah, now I'm ready to go to sleep. How about you? I'm ready to go to sleep? Yeah. So thank you for watching this video. I know it was kind of a long one, but I mean, obviously who couldn't watch with a cute little boy like this? You got some education, you got some cuteness, but um, I have links in the description for Athea um, skincare. I am also going to list the ADA website um, and his uh, Instagram is also down there. So is my Instagram. And don't forget to check out my Etsy, uh, The Crafting Aries. It's getting to the Christmas season. Um, and I would really like if you guys bought some gifts from me. I do a lot of custom stuff as well. And I have more stuff that is coming up on the shop this weekend, um, which because I post them Sunday, it should already be up. Um, but if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not for me, please give it a thumbs up for Theo because he was such a good sport. Um, please hit subscribe to see more videos from me in the future and they will feature this little guy uh, if he behaves. <laughs> um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Are you playing?